Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Krug and the AP Chemistry 2022 free response questions have been released and I am about to work through question number five. So we'll see how you did on this one. See if you got all four of the points that are available on this. Just a disclaimer, I'm not the college board. I don't represent the college board. Uh, I am just an AP Chemistry teacher who's been teaching AP Chemistry successfully for about the last 22 years. And so I'm just going to do my best to work through this and we'll see how we do. So we'll start with part A here. And as you can see, number five is basically a rate question. It comes right out and tells us what the balanced equation is, as you can see. And it also comes right out and tells us what the rate law is. So that's, that's kind of nice. Now, part A, we have a table here of the time in hours versus the concentration of dinitrogen a pentoxide that we have here and as we can see it's going down every uh, you know every certain interval of time and the question for part a says calculate the rate constant for, for for the reaction include units in your answer now there are a couple different ways to work this problem uh, personally the way I would work this problem is I would say the easy way because it looks like you know this is a first order process because the exponent on this is a is understood to be a one and so you notice that there's a half life that's shown here it goes from 0.16 down to 0.08 molar and so that tells me that if the concentration is being cut in half well the time that that requires is what's called the half-life and for first order processes, the half-life, which we call T sub 1 half, equals 0.693 over K. And this is an equation that's given to you in the equation packet for, uh, for the exam. And so all we have to do is uh, just plug and chug here. So the half-life is 1.67 hours. So I'm going to put that in here, 1.67 hours. And that's equal to 0.693 over k. And so uh, when we cross multiply, we get 1.67 hours times k equals 0.693. And when we divide both sides by 1.67 hours, we get that k equals 0.415 reciprocal hours okay so it's important that you carry through the units on this uh, on this uh, calculation because they are very uh, much a stickler for units on the rate constant you have to give the correct unit to get full credit uh, I don't know exactly how they're going to assign points my wild guess here is that they're going to give one point for the right number the 0.415 and they give one point for the correct unit which is reciprocal hour now, just so you know, um, this is not the only way to work the problem. You could use the first order integrated rate law. And that's also given to you in the, in the uh, equation packet. Just plug and chug any of these two points in there. You should get the exact same answer. So that's how you can do part A. Now, part B, we have a question about the mechanism that's been possibly proposed for this. And we are being asked which of the steps is the rate determining step. Now, whenever you have a problem like this, personally, I always start with step number one and just try working through that. So the rate law for step number one is just rate equals K times the concentration of whatever reactants you have multiplied by each other. Well, there's only one reactant. It's N205. So that's the rate law for the first step. And guess what? That is the rate law for the whole reaction. So that one, that's all we had to do. Just look at the step one and that's the answer. So I would say that the rate determining step is step one and the rationale is that the rate law of step one is, well, what I just wrote there, rate equals K times the concentration of N2O5, which is consistent with the rate law of the overall reaction. Whoops. Of the overall reaction. And so as a result, step one 
is the slow step or the slow slash rate determining step. So something to that order. Okay, so if you have that with the correct ex explanation, I believe you'd receive one point for that. Now moving on to part C, we have another question. It says, if this experiment was repeated at the same temperature, but with twice the initial concentration of dinitrogen pentoxide, would the value of K increase, decrease, or stay the same? Explain. And they like to ask this one every now and then. Uh, the answer is, and this is the key part here, we are doing this at the same temperature. Okay? Uh, rate constants are temperature, depend are temperature dependent. Okay, they're temperature dependent. So as long as if you're at the same, uh, and I have to use the second person here, but if you're at the same temperature, the value of K remains the same. And so that's what you want to say. You want to say it stays the same and it's because the temperature is the same. The only way to change the actual value of the rate constant is to change the temperature. So if you say that with the correct explanation, a point there. So I'm counting up four points. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got them all right. Even if you didn't, I hope you learned something here and I hope you got something out of AP Chemistry. Like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, if you enjoyed this and uh, learned something from the explanation, if you'd be so kind as, as to give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, subscribe if you'd like and hope to see you again on here next time where I'll be uh, explaining the rest of these fear response questions. Hopefully we can learn some more chemistry together. Chemistry.